Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Matthew DeMars. Um, although most people just call me Matt, I am a professor, a teaching focused professor in the Department of Mathematics and Statistics, and I'm happy to be talking to you today. I would like to thank everybody for the opportunity to speak. And to the graduating class, I want to wish you every piece of congratulations for making it this far and dealing with some interesting circumstances that I think it's safe to say that none of us would have saw coming. To those of you who I had the chance to teach, sometimes over three or even four courses, I cherish the number of interesting, intricate, and challenging concepts that we went over together. It's so easy to be reminded of all the different ways in which math is truly beautiful, and over the years, I've learned to fully embrace being a math nerd. Perhaps you remember those times where we would come up with silly names for every other math formula we'd come across in the hopes that you'd be able to recall them and use them as needed. I sincerely hope, for example, that you've been able to use and can continue to tell the difference between the cool rule, the golden rule, and the formulas of destiny. Or between Mr. Jaggy, Mr. Squiggles, and Mr. Squishy from our work in circuits. Or between the big D from differential equations, the operator, not me, and the big O from numerical methods, not well, let's not go there. For those of you who are watching this anyway, even if we didn't get the chance to meet before, I hope you've come to realize over even just the last sentence or two how math can indeed be much more interesting and fun um, and weird than uh, just dryly crunching numbers for 50 minutes at a time. We have a pretty good time in our lectures. Certainly, those lectures have been a place where I can truly feel in the zone a place to touch base with my students, to catch up with my usual front row sitters, kind of like a strange academic version of Sunday dinner with the family, and a place where I can freely be that math nerd that I am, running around at the front of the room like an idiot to try and demonstrate how Runge-Kata methods work or how a physically realistic pendulum is likely not to fly off the handle when it's put into motion. Those experiences, even in front of hundreds of students at a time, have always been leveling for me. They keep me going during bustling days in a busy semester. Those good questions from students keep my brain hard at work and interested. And the fact that students will sometimes even have pity on me and laugh at my terrible puns, sometimes, not always, sometimes it's a groan instead, at least those times would help to put a smile on my face. Um, these memories, these, these times, these lectures have helped me stay positive real, grounded, good. It's maybe not so surprising then that in the current environment, there have been times that I, like many people out there these days, have struggled. When I was trying to figure out how to frame this talk at first, I went back and forth between a few different themes and wondered what it would be that I should talk about. I kept coming back to the elephant in the room. That is, simply put, this year has been like no other. And while so many of us have been trucking along as best we can, it hasn't been an easy ride. Working from home has been hard for many, myself included. The specters of disinformation, toxic, politi toxic politics, and racism have put a cloud over many aspects of our modern world that can seem impossible or difficult to see the sunshine through. Ultimately, I don't think I would be doing my job here today without talking a little about mental health. At the very least, my own, while feeling overwhelmed sometimes with all of these issues. If maybe some people watching today would be able to relate to or even be helped by my words, then I'll have done what I set out to do today. As a disclaimer, I by no means am an expert at the science behind mental health, but I am a human being, and I'm a strong believer that since we are all in our first, and probably last, trip through this thing called life, sharing our experiences to help each other is one of the most important gifts that we can give. There's an orientation week activity that I've long been a part of, one that I first met a few of you at, very likely, called Profs Are People Too. And interestingly, this message seems to ring so clear here in this last lecture. I thought that it might be really helpful to know that if you've had some of these rough patches over the last couple of semesters, you are by no means alone. That even those people who you think might have it together, often do not. 
that sometimes the people you think are the strongest and the most optimistic have to sail through their own stormy seas sometimes. Even your favorite, most seemingly energetic profs might have spent hours in the morning not wanting to get out of bed, choosing instead to scroll endlessly through their phone trying to search for some new brilliant meme to smile about as a spark of fuel to face another day of virtual meetings on Microsoft Teams. I do strongly believe it is a comfort to know that the people you might look up to most might be living their own set of struggles, though sometimes they are not apparent at first glance. So what to do? I want to share two of my own strategies that have helped to lift myself out of these most challenging moments. Maybe they'll be obvious. Maybe that doesn't matter. Maybe, like I mentioned a moment ago, simply sharing from human to human will at least help to reassure you and bring a smile to your face. First of all, I've taken some great peace from finding my own virtual friendships and communities. One big source of challenges and pessimism for me um, has been through feeling helpless when it comes to everyday activism. It's really easy to try and be a keyboard warrior on your favorite social media app, to try and somehow save the world from all the bad stuff out there. Sharing that perfect retort to your distant uncle's off-color post might make you feel powerful or vindicated in the moment. But almost always, these efforts seem to fall flat or even backfire. While I'm not saying you shouldn't call out your uncle, you probably should, I'd like you to consider this. In my real analysis class, not to bring it back to math, but that's kind of what I am, we often talk about a, a neighborhood, about a particular point, to indicate a set that is near to that point. For example, a neighborhood of radius 3 about x would indicate all points that are at most 3 away from that x. In the real numbers, the neighborhood of radius 3 about the point 5 would be all of the points, all the numbers from 2 to 8. What I'm saying is we all do our best when we share ourselves, our feelings, our values with a small neighborhood about ourselves, some small radius of people that surround us in some way. In our everyday actions, being thoughtful and mindful of others' feelings, being kind and generous, sharing the positive values you hold, spreading optimism, even in the midst of those times that feels really tough, helping one another out without expectation, listening. These interactions, these conversations can have a profound impact, brighten someone's day if even a little bit, and most importantly, give both parties a chance to learn from one another, absorbing some of those positive ideas and values. I have gained so much from these kinds of interactions every single year when I meet new students from all over the world and all walks of life. I've come to realize that amazingly, this holds even in a virtual environment. There are some students this year I never would have expected um, that despite having never met them in person, I've gotten to know better than I ever could have imagined through labs, office hours, and even gaming sessions on Twitch. Both before and after COVID, I have often spent as much time in my group office hours just getting to know who I'm teaching as much as I spend actually working through those ugly, undetermined coefficients problems. Those chances to really get to know people are invaluable, perhaps just as valuable or more as the math that we learn. I believe those students I've interacted with would feel the same way. As I just mentioned briefly, I've taken up a new hobby of streaming video games live in some of my evenings over the past couple of semesters, which has been an interesting ride. There I've managed to form a pretty amazing and supportive close-knit community of people from all walks of life, new and past students, some old friends I haven't seen in years, and even complete strangers who have been willing to have conversations with me even while I try my best to improve my speedrun times in Mario games. Conversations that can be silly or downright weird, conversations that can be sober or serious, and just about everything in between. For some reason, food comes up a lot too, and I've often said that the topics that bring us together as humans are food and games. Anyway, those chats have helped me to find new neighborhoods for me to continue to share my own values with and to learn from even more people who, again, I've never even met in person. Those shared perspectives, this exchange of values, we soak things up from each other as some kind of osmosis, and this could be a very valuable thing. 
on this personal level within that small radius neighborhood and not typically on your distant uncle's Facebook wall is where values are influenced, how perspectives can be shifted and minds gradually changed over time. With our friends, our colleagues, and even our relationship partners and family members, we can gain and learn so much. We can help one another to remain optimistic and hopefully as a result, change lives for the better. A second thing that has helped me, I've taken time recently to reflect on things that have brought happiness and laughter. We might not have had any in-person classes this year, but there have been plenty of fantastic memories made nonetheless. Sharing math jokes on my whiteboard to help bring some fun to my YouTube lectures. Bringing my love dragon to our live differential equations class on Halloween. Crowning the ultimate champion of our first ever virtual mental math challenge while raising a pile of money for charity. And then going toe to toe with that champion myself, me versus the student, and whipping his butt in mental math. That felt good. Having a socially distant frisbee toss in the snow with a couple of students on a bitterly cold and snowy day, though the picture you see in the current image was actually taken a few years ago after winning the intramural frisbee finals. Hosting SEP's first ever Math Jeopardy episode and having my mom and dad figure out Zoom so that they could tune in and watch. There were some amazing highlights made over the past couple of semesters alone, and these great memories not only point to good times past, but also remind us of the kinds of fun that we might have ahead of us. That is, if we were able to create so many cool, fun, enjoyable memories during a challenging, socially distant semester, there is the promise of so many more and greater moments ahead as the situation is likely to improve over the months and years to come. Reflecting on those uplifting memories got me to wonder, what kinds of other fun stuff could I recall here at the 2021 last lecture as we come to a close? Things that would bring fond recollections to my own past students and smiles to anyone else, even those who were not my past students. And it quickly dawned on me that I have a treasure trove of great pictures that I've collected over the years. See, I have a long-standing tradition that I plan to continue well into the future. After every test, as any of my students know, I like to take time out and talk about it a bit, go over the grades, give a recap of some common errors and tough questions, and then show off some of the funny things that students tend to draw in the form of a slideshow. And so here I thought, what better way to bring some happiness than to do a bit of a best of. I want to show off a few of my very favorites from over the years because I thought that would be a very fitting way to end my last lecture. So let's take a look at some of these. In this first one, you see this weird L that um, is here, and it's made out of lots of little Ls. My students have always loved drawing um, the L from what's a Laplace transform, which is a, a little operator, an interesting operator in differential equations. And it has this whoosh. People just love it. I, I can draw it easily, and I don't know, it's just a cursive L, but students will draw this thing all over the place, and, and it's just a, a long-standing thing. So some, this is the best L that I've ever seen in my, um, in my whole career so far. So I'm expecting many more Ls to come, and not the bad kind. If we look at the next one here, um, sometimes students struggle to, to, to put together their, uh, their correct uh, uh, solutions to problems and so on. And some of the comics just, just make you snort and laugh. You can be grading over hours and hours and hours and then come to one of these little comics. I was not prepared. And, um, and it's, uh, it lightens up the mood a little bit when you're uh, tired of marking as it is. Um, but sometimes, sometimes students do the right things they just can't believe how ugly some, some stuff. I'm not going to lie. I love math. Sometimes it gets a little ugly. <laughs> and so <laughs> I, I verified this student did get perfect on this question, if you, if you zoom out. So this hurts my eyes and heart, though, does speak to, I remember writing out the solutions to this problem, and, and it is kind of gross. But, but um, congratulations to the student for getting this question correct anyway. Um, sometimes there are just things that, Students come up with that I don't even expect. Suppose the ratio A over B is positive. Find an expression for, you know, seek of the arctan of A over B or whatever. And the student has written facial besides expression and then written a happy face. Like, honestly, 
Like, this is, how about a happy one? Well, I said, like, let's bring smiles here, but people are bringing smiles to their test even as they take the zero on the, on the question. Um, I don't know, it, just love it. I have one more, I have one more here, and it's just super, super cute. Um, here we have a, a problem that uh, uh, involves a function u of t. So u is our dependent variable. t is the time variable that it d depends on and so on. u of t is fine, but I prefer u of g, which I thought was just a very funny and, and fitting way to, to end this off. Anyway, a few little memories there. I have so many more, um, but I wanted to share a few of, of these here at the end. This brings us to the end of the things that I wanted to share with you for this year's faculty last lecture. As a parting message, I want to encourage you once again to make the best positive impact upon each and every one of your neighborhoods, however small or large they might be, and to use those beautiful and uplifting and funny memories of the past as inspiration for why we ought to look forward to making many, many more in the future. Thank you very much.